you're watching the big story tonight. Learning in 31 public universities is on hold following a 21-day strike called by the University Academic Staff Union. Uasu says the strike was necessitated by the failure to effect basic salary and house allowance as negotiated by the unions. The 10 billion shilling salary increment has been partially honoured by the government. However, some varsity administrators are yet to move workers' salary brackets to the new rates as envisaged under the 2013 to 2017 collective bargaining agreement. Wasu maintains that its members in public universities and constituent colleges shall not resume duty until the deal is fully implemented. Meanwhile, university students are set to begin a hunger strike tomorrow to pressure the government to re resolve the lecturer's strike. Inter-Public Universities Consultative Forum has, however, termed the strike premature and is urging Uasu to call it off. We gave a notice. Nobody bothered to call us to negotiate. We extended the notice by another seven days. Nobody bothered to call us. And now we are saying the only thing that can make us call off this strike is when our members have their money in their pockets. For in conclusion, the IPUCCF is urging Uasu to call off the industrial action and also appealing to all members of staff of public universities to provide an interrupted service so that operations in public universities are normalized. Well, that is the big story tonight uh, with me, Akisa Wandera. We get the perspective of the lecturer's representative, our student leader, Edwin Kegoli, will be giving us uh, the perspective from the student side. We also have Micah Gwanda, who's an educationist and a parent at one of the public universities in the country. Our lead reporter, Sophia Wanuna, is on standby with Uasu chairman, JQuad chapter, Rugara Muiga. And Sophia, I will hand it over to you as we begin the big story this hour. Good evening. Good evening, Akisa. The lecturers in the country, in the public universities, have downed their tools. Today being the ninth day of the lecturers' strike, this, Akisa, is the third strike by the dawns this year alone. And as you mentioned at the top of the show, it is because of that 2013-2017 uh, CBA that is yet to be honoured, despite a return to work formula having been arrived at between the universities uh, academic uh, that's wasu uh, academic staff union alongside the inter public universities forum that has not been honored treasury list 10 billion shillings however largely that amount went to settling arrears in the higher education sector and so even though parliament uh, allowed for more money to be released to ensure that this uh, uh, money and uh, paid to the staff of the universities, the CBA is honoured, that is yet to happen and has seen uh, the WASU leadership petition, the National Assembly, the Senate as well as the Ministry of Education. This strike is affecting 31 universities across the country and their constituent colleges, that's the public uh, universities. So what happened at the beginning is that five of those uh, universities went ahead to honor uh, this CBA and pay those basic salaries in an updated fashion in accordance to this uh, CBA as well as house allowances. However, two uh, of those uh, then reverted to the earlier CBA. Uh, so the questions uh, continue to rise. What is going on to be raised rather? What is going on in the public uh, sector and as far as higher education is concerned? And joining me to put a clearer picture of just the challenges they are facing is Gara Moega. He is the chairman of Wasu Jekua chapter. Thank you for making time uh, for us tonight. Let's begin with money was released by Treasury. Parliament allowed for more money to be able to uh, effect and um, implement this particular CBA. What's going on? Uh, we are suspicious that there is something fishy about the money that was released for purposes of enhancing the salaries and house arises for dons in all public that are one public universities. 
And because it is not the first time our money has disappeared to unknown places, that's why we decided to come out and ask for it. You remember in the CBA 2010-2013, we got 7.8 billion. We were only paid 3.9 billion until we came out and the president, Uhuru Kenyatta, who was the minister of finance by the time 7.8 billion was being released, by then he was the president later. He became president later and they had to order the minister to release 3.9 billion that had been disappeared in the, within the Ministry of Education. This time we are aware that the parliament has approved 5.2 billion in the hazards, according to the hazard, parliamentary hazards for 11th October 2017. That hazard also contains the money that was used by IEBC to conduct the second uh, fresh presidential elections. And now, Shabukat did not go to court for him to get his money. Why should Don's, I mean, he did not even go on strike. Why should the government wait for the Don's to go on strike to raise their money to enhance their salaries? Yeah. What, what's at the heart of these issues? Because this is the third strike uh, this year alone. So what would you attribute these issues, this back and forth on? Uh, I think I attribute the whole of this problem with the man management of education sector in this country. I, um, we, we are aware that there is reforms that are being done by the Ministry of Education, like from the primary school, secondary school. But I really have a problem with this bottom-up approach of reforms. I think our reforms should take a, a top-bottom approach, where we, we, we reform the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the top uh, administrative structures before we go to the ground, because those primary school kids and high school kids are supposed to end up in the university. But now, the university education is already crumbling. Higher education in university is already crumbling. How will you reform the primary and secondary education? It means there is a real problem that is going to bite hard on these reforms. And I would ask the government to seriously consider uh, restructuring your higher education sector, especially dealing with the people who are, uh, uh, who are abating maladministration okay. in the higher education sector. So you are the chair of yes. the Jekuat Uwasu chapter. Yes. Jekuat initially had complied uh, with the requirements of pay in terms yes. of the 2013-2017 yes. uh, structure and CBA, yes. but has then gone back. Yes. Why is that? We are seeing history repeating itself. Even in the 3.9 billion that was, we are saying had disappeared, some universities had paid. Masai Mana had paid, Multimedia University had paid, so about five universities had paid that extra 3.9 billion. It is until we went on strike that the other universities paid after the money was recovered from wherever it has disappeared to. Now we are seeing the same repeat of the whole thing. The 5.2 billion, which was approved by parliament, could have landed in the universities, but they have disappeared somewhere. But some vice chancellors, maybe who are you? Who are genuine or, or, or uh, who are not, uh, who, who have decided to pay the money. So we are wondering why could Jay Kwat pay July salary and then August salary, they go back to the old salary? Why would Karatina pay the, new, the enhanced salary on, in July and in August, in August they revert back to the old salary? Why would you can a university? give pay slips that of enhanced salary which come before the, the money, but when they are paying the, the money for July, they pay their own salary. You know, this, Sophia, is a case where you earn a higher salary and all of a sudden it is, it is, it is, it is they, they retract back to their own salary. It is actually a dishonesty in the part of the university administration. So, the Inter-Public Universities Forum has yeah. said that talks are ongoing to be able to deal with this current strike. Yes. Are you engaging and what's the progress? Uh, we have not been engaged in any talks. What has happened is that we gave, and there is a point which is coming up very serious, people are asking whether it is the right time to go on strike. Is there a government or is there not? We are telling people, Uwasu is asking money from a government. In fact, Uwasu going on strike and asking for their money is actually legitimizing that there is a government in place. Two, it is also necessary to understand that when we, we give, when, before you go on strike, you give a strike notice. We wanted to go on strike sometimes in September. But because the election was, was the, the, the uh, former elections were presidential elections were cancelled, we had to postpone our, our elections, our, our strike, and give a notice that was expiring on 25th October. That time, the, the fresh elections were supposed to be held on 17th. But when the elections were again postponed to 26th, 
our notice uh, lapsed on 25th October. We had to extend our strike, uh, our notice for seven more days so that it, they ended up on 1st, July, 1st November. That's why our strike started in 1st November. What does that mean? That means that we were careful not to interfere with the electioneering process in the country when the country was still undergoing such a uh, uh, attention movement. And we, because we consider so many factors, when we took our strike to, to 1st November, we gave the government all that time so that they could actually respond or talk to us. As we are talking, there are no talks going on. What we are aware is that IPUCCF has been meeting. And you know IPUCCF is councils, or chairman of councils of the all universities, and of course the vice-chancellors, because they are secretaries to the council by virtue of their being vice chancellors. So they are the ones meeting alone. They have not called Uwasu anywhere. And the, after all, why call Uwasu? Because we are not negotiating a, a, the, the CBA fresh. All right. Mm. And as the Uwasu leadership, as we bring this to a close, yes. do you not um, feel for the plight of the students? Three times their calendar education has been interrupted. Yes, we are aware some of the student uh, leaders have talked about going on a hunger, hunger strike to support yes. uh, this industrial action. But what do you tell to students who... Grass, katikati. Yeah, uh, we, we emphasize with uh, our, our 600,000 students who are having challenges, and of course our parents as well. But I want to say this, teaching in the higher education sector is actually more of a sacrifice than a job. It's more of a calling than a, a money-making venture. A lecturer, a junior lecturer is earning 69,000 as, as we are talking. He's supposed to be earning, according to the NHCBA, 83,000. A whole professor is earning 211,000. He's supposed to be earning 248,000. Now, the problem is, if you cannot pay a lecturer good remuneration, when his student, SRC, the body which is supposed to harmonize our salaries, approved 212,000 for a graduate doctor, a medical doctor who leaves class, in, in JK, what we are teaching medicine. The, medical, the students who, graduate, who are graduating this month and they go to the medical and they are employed by the government, they start with the 212 salary. Okay. That is much higher than the professor who was teaching him in class. Right. So there is this harmony of salaries in the education sector. And I want the government to also censor SRC. Because SRC, instead of coming to harmonize salaries in the higher education sector, they actually deharmonized. Okay. Yeah. So you support the hunger strike by the students? Uh, if they go for it? Whenever people are agitating for a right, they have no problem with the people who support them. In fact, the, the onus remains with the people who are on strike to convince the public, as we are doing now, that what you are doing is not, um, is not a malicious vision against the education sector, but simply a kindly request to the government to honor, their, to, to obey their right. Many thanks. Thank you so much Thank for you. being with us here on The Big uh, Story. Akisa, that's uh, Rugara Muga, who is the chair of the Uwasu JK, uh, Jekuat, I beg your pardon, uh, chapter, talking to us more about just what this clamor is about, that overpaid, or rather overworked and underpaid, and also brain drain that's been uh, seen in the higher education sector, saying it will get into a crisis if it is not, and the issues arising are not dealt with at this particular point. And so, uh, Akisa, will hand it back to you. All right, Sophia Anuna, there, our lead reporter here on the big story with uh, the chairman of the Uwasu Jaquat chapter, just talking about the grievances they have as lecturers. So. Uh, we will also be having our guests in studio to just comment about uh, what has been said there by the chairman of the Wasu Jaquat chapter. But before we get to that, I would also love to hear from you. The hashtag to use is a big story. I will be taking a look at some of your views about uh, this current Ampas, the third time this year, uh, definitely affecting or disrupting the academic calendar for over 600,000 students in the country. But under the new deal, the new salary bracket for the lowest paid assistant lecturer should move up to 82,037 shillings from 69,794 shillings. Now, the highest paid lecturer um, is also 
earning about uh, 110,000 uh, uh, 742 shillings it is expected to it is expected to go up to 158,967 but that of course is the highest paid assistant lecturer who's expected to be paid 117,121 up from 99,642 let's take a look at the salaries for the lowest paid lecturer in uh, of course uh, the higher education system in the country 97,984 Kenya shillings um, up from 83,361 this is what they are expecting in their bank accounts from the 2013-2017 CBA that had already been registered and uh, the highest paid lecturer is expected to go home with 139,711 up from 118,861 we also have the senior lecturer who currently earns 94,215 but according to the CBA is expected to go home with 110,742 like Adalia mentioned and the highest paid senior lecturer is expected to go home with 158,967 Kenya shillings up from 135,243 Kenya shillings just some of the statistics there according to the 2013 to the 2017 uh, CBA that lecturers are saying once and for all let's just finish this conversation of the 2013 to 2017 uh, CBA before of course they register the 2018 to 2022 CBA once again I'll mention uh, just introduce my guests in studio Edwin Kegoli is the chairman of the Moi University Students Organization joining us in studio as well as Mike Aguanda is an education analyst and also a parent of a student in a public university in the country. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us tonight on The Big Story. I'll just let you start by reacting to what we've had from Muga Rigara, the chairman of the Wasu Jaquat chapter. I'll start with you, Mr. Gwanda, kindly. Thank you, Anona. It's a great opportunity to be part of this huge discussion in the country. Uh, as you can uh, as you all know, it's been about three strikes since the beginning of this year. And uh, this does not just entail, um, you know, serious, um, uh, serious impact in the institutions that these uh, professors are, are, are teaching in, but uh, the students are equally affected and so are uh, the students. Um, I speak here as, a, as, as an educationist. I, I run an agency that uh, educates uh, so many children in this country, some at the university, some in primary and high school. But on the other hand, I also speak here as a parent. Um, I, I just took a child to University of Nairobi engineering department, and hardly two weeks after paying the money and him joining college, the college was closed down indefinitely. And, and, and besides that uh, you know it uh, the uh, the the, uh, the professor's strike or the lecturer strike just compounded the issue uh, by by you know, students staying at home longer. When we pay money, we expect students to be in colleges. We expect students to be uh, lectured. And when the lecturers decide that it's time uh, for them to go on strike, everybody suffers. The institution, the parents, uh, the students themselves. We have students now that were supposed to do their exams uh, towards the end of, of, of their, their year in college. And now uh, they are, everything is at sunset. They're wondering, when are we going to be able to uh, finish college. But you know, um, again, uh, as we talk about the predicaments that the, our students are going through in colleges, we also must say that something is wrong and our institutions in this country are breaking down. And because we cannot have a situation where lecturers uh, CBA are actually signed and, and deposited and, and, and registered and, and arrears paid and then suddenly money is not being released to the institutions. I mean, the question is, why should Ministry of Education hold money for the lecturers? And the fundamental question even uh, beyond that is why is money being held by education, Ministry of Education, instead of that very money being released to various institutions to manage it so that uh, even if something happens on the issue of capitation, uh, that, that, uh, that the institutions already have the 
money and the administration in various universities will be able to pay uh, the lecturers. It is absurd to see figures being read of what uh, the lecturers are supposed to, uh, to, be, to be earning, and yet they don't earn what has even been promised them. In fact, part of the payment in terms of their arrears already paid. The question we are asking this government is, do people who make decisions, in fact, their case is even more difficult to just comprehend, simply because uh, the parliament has approved the money. And why isn't the money being released, yet the parents are suffering out there? Why not? If you know that a child, when a child is removed from college, the parent has to pay money for him to get to their rural home, and he has to pay money for them to come back. And it is not their mistake, because they paid school fees, and they're supposed to finish a semester, yet they're not able to. Uh, the, um Jake Wasu, a chapter chairman who's just had a conversation with Sofia Wanuna, uh, says that there's need for a holistic restructuring of uh, higher education in this country. Is this something, uh, is it a conversation that we should start as Kenyans currently? Yes, Bonagwanda, uh, kindly just a comment on whether you think it's time to have that conversation on a holistic restructuring of higher education in the country. I really think it is high time a uh, honest discussion is done about our higher education structure in this country. I really think our education system, especially at the highest level, and that is universities and even post-universities, are having issues. I really think that when you have lecturers abandoning their tools and the students at the same time, it is actually a bad sign for a country that is supposed to be an example in the East African community. We are the country in East African community that all our neighbors are watching. When our institutions of higher learning falls or breaks down, then where are they going to run to? Uh, you know, for example, in Tanzania, if you go to Tanzania, all they will say is you, need, you don't have to go to America, just go to Kenya and you'll see what a real education is and what real you know, modernization is. Our neighbors are literally you know, envying us for what we've done. And when we start seeing students going to colleges who are supposed to finish four years and then end up finishing six years because of this type of breaks every now and again, it should bother this country. When you are running an institution of higher learning, you're okay. not only looking at you, you know, within your country, but you're also looking at without the students from Rwanda, South Sudan, the students from Uganda should be coming here, pay our institutions more, but they could only do that if they know that if the course is for four years, it's going to be four years. All and right. so, yeah. And we're talking about the 600,000 students in this particular uh, year who are said to be affected by the strike. The third time it's happening um, this year. We have a student leader in studio with us, Edwin Kegole, the chairman of the Moi University Student Organization. And uh, they're currently having a conversation about uh, starting a hunger strike in support of this particular lecturer's strike. Edwin, kindly let us in on that. Thank you so much uh, for bringing me in this studio tonight. And first, let me express my greatest gratitude to Almighty God. Number two, we are in this situation because the government and lecturers are stuck in an issue that otherwise can't be resolved in, with uh, good faith. Students are left at the mercy of no one. Students are here once more suffering from the industrial action that has been sanctioned by our dons. And we say, the government should take the comrades' interests seriously. We need the government to refocus on how it engages students. Students are suffering at this particular point in time. The third strike in a row, and we say students are suffering. Many of them were supposed to come back from the 26th uh, by uh, rerun. 
many of them have not been able to come back because they are not sure whether they'll find lecturers in class. Because actually no learning is going on in our universities. Learning is paralyzed, no academic activity is going on. There are students who are supposed to graduate this coming December. Many of them are wondering when they will graduate because they need the lecturers to sort out their issues of marks. They need lecturers to put together their transcripts so that they make it into the graduation list. And as long as lecturers are on strike, this issue of graduation in December to these students remain a mystery. They are highly uncertain whether they will graduate. There are those students who are supposed to proceed on with their cuts. Our exams are due in December. No learning is going on. We cannot sit for our exams when we've not been taught because what will, be, what will we be answering in our exams papers? And therefore we say, for once, the government should listen to our cry. The government should actually empathize with us because our lecturers are raising legitimate concerns. The government negotiated this document with the lecturers in full consciousness. It cannot say this, uh, this is a forced document. We say we appreciate that the government is going through a hard time right now. We are in a difficult moment as a, as a country because our economy is in turmoil and many of our hopes are threatened. And we say, yeah. though we are in difficult times as a nation, mm -hmm. but let us refocus on our priorities. Let us get them right so that the critical areas of the sectors needs to be looked into and the, this issue of lecturer strike addressed with finality so that it doesn't recur. It doesn't repeat itself every now and then so that when a document is negotiated for implementation and deposited in court, the government or the relevant agencies right. should make sure that it is implemented in full. All right, I want us to take a quick break here on the big story. Members, you watchers would like to hear what you think um, about uh, the current stalemate in the high education uh, in the public universities in the country. The hashtag to use is the big story at KTN News or you can tweet me at Akisa Let's take that break. We'll be back with more.